Thank you so much for studying the Hatsura. And today we are going to study about <coughs> causes and cause and causes and condition. <coughs> so according to Buddhism and Buddhist philosophy, philosophy, the understanding of <coughs> causes and condition is one of the very important things we must learn. Because the first time when Buddha gave teaching about four noble truths, when he talked about suffering, the suffering not really, you know, given by, you know, like God or some a kind of, uh, uh, given by God or not arising without causes, condition. The first time when he talked about suffering, the first time he when he talked about suffering, he talked about the cause of suffering. The second, you know, he talked about cessation, which is we really want to cease the suffering. The cessation also, you know, arises from cause of condition. That's why we just recite the mantra, right? Om Yadama Hidu Prabhava Hidu Nitesham Tata Gato Hayavata Nitte Shenchayo Roda Yamamati Mahashamana Soha. When you look at in the English translation, <coughs> all phenomena arise from causes. The causes are taught by the Tathagata. The cessation of the cause as well is taught by a great seer. This means the happiness which we always want is also arise from causes condition. The suffering which we don't want is also arising from causes condition. So according to Buddhist philosophy, Buddhism, the law of you know law of causality is very important, very important concept. So if we really want to achieve uh, cessation or nirvana, we must put enough effort to the causes and conditions of nirvana. If we really don't want sufferings, we must pay attention to the causes and conditions of the suffering and try to avoid. If we have a if you have a good understanding of law of causality, then you're going to understand cessation. You're going to understand the Buddha, Buddhahood. If if you don't have a good understanding, good knowledge of the law of causality, the first we don't understand four noble truths. If we don't understand four noble truths, how we can practice the four noble truths. So Buddhism always talk about cause and effect, cause and result. So in order to know the cause of the you know, law, law and causality, so we have a two types of law of causality. One is the external law of causality. Second is internal law of causality. So external law of causality, I think we everybody know, you know, if we need to grow flowers, we must get the seeds, water, soil, and we must test, you know, the time that we can grow something. So we know the external level. But we don't know so much about the internal law of causality. <clears throat> For example, you know, sometimes we have a very strong again, anger. Sometimes we have an attachment. Sometimes we have a very sense of you know, self-centered. Sometimes we have a sense of compassion. How all these emotions arise within our mind? We don't know so much about the inner 
law of causality. According to Buddhist philosophy, all the happiness which you want is very much dependent on inner causes and condition. If we have an inner, inner, inner causes and condition for happiness, the happiness always within us. Even though we don't want suffering, if all the causes and condition of the suffering within us, the suffering always arise. So this thing, if you really want to be happy, try to understand the causes and condition of happiness. Try to help all the causes and condition of happiness. If you don't want suffering, first we must recognize the causes and condition of the suffering. Then we try to avoid, try to minimize, try to reduce, and try to eliminate. If we don't eliminate the causes and condition of suffering, we cannot eliminate the suffering. Right? So this is very, you know, uh, uh, it is the fact. So we have to learn about causes condition. That's why when Buddha talk about the four uh, twin links interdependent, how you know the samsara. Uh, the, 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 process, the process of the samsara. First he talk about ignorance. Before ignorance, he talk about ignorance within the twelve first ignorance. The first what he said in the Sudara. This is exists. Therefore, that is exists. The Yubi, the Ju. This means the causes and conditions exist. That's why the, you know, the resort also exists. That is a rise. Therefore, this is a rise. That means there is a causes condition and there is a result. Very equal. Equally it exists. Causes and cause and effect. The second question is the cause is permanent or impermanent? No, the cause is impermanent. That's why the result also impermanence. Permanent causes condition cannot produce anything. That's why we don't accept permanent causes and condition. Because something is permanent, there is not really changes, there is not really to transform how we can produce something. That's why this is exists, therefore there is exists. Causes exist, then effect is exists. The cause is you know causes the cause is impermanence, impermanent, that's why the result effect also impermanent. Equally exists, equally impermanent. The last there he said you know, for example, ignorance. Therefore, the ignorance produces karma. The, 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 the third, uh, you know, sentence, he was uh, saying, there is a causes condition, there is a result. But all causes condition cannot, cannot produce everything. For example, there is a causes and condition of the barley. The barley causes condition produce what? They can produce only barley. They cannot produce wheat. That's why, you know, the, the, the action, the positive actions, the negative action, the neutral action must arise from ignorance. If you want to stop to reborn in the samsara, First, we have to stop the karma. We have to eliminate the karma. If you really want to eliminate the karma, first you have to eliminate ignorance. That's why, you know, within the five paths, a practitioner who reach to the same path, when they see emptiness directly, then he totally minimize the, you know, ignorance, but not eliminate. The, 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 the Arya, 
you know, Arya, who reached to the same thought, the practitioner we call Arya, transcendent being, ordinary being. So the person who see the emptiness, they be named what? Arya. Arya, you know, or Arhat. Arya. The practitioner who reached to the Arya states, since then, he or she never accumulate you know, fresh, new, negative karma. Then he stop, you know, start to stop reborn in samsara. So, for this condition. So, in order to understand the inner cause condition, first we have to understand the external level. Generally, all impermanent phenomena has a four characteristics. It's a we call four characteristics or you know first one is arise. Page number 384. Arise or birth and aging. Aging is kind of decay. Then a body exists. Then impermanence. Okay? These are those are we call four characteristics of all impermanent phenomena. Right? What are they? Page number 384. Birth. Second, aging. Third, abiding. Fourth, impermanence. This means all conditioned phenomena. Right? Condition means the phenomena which is depend on condition, then we call condition phenomena. All condition phenomena are, you know, birth, mean arise, aging, like decay or changing, abiding, the remind, exist, and always impermanence. These those are four characteristic of condition phenomena. When you look at Four of them, you can see, you know, birth, then aging, a body, impermanent. You can see it looks like there's an order. First, birth. Second, then aging. But then a body. But no. Four of them, you know, exist simultaneously. So, the four characteristics exist. Simultaneously. For example, something errors, errors freshly. Okay. Fre errors freshly, this means it's change. Right? Change, aging. And errors itself is a, a body. Errors itself also impermanence. There's no first, second, third, fourth. Everything happened simultaneously. That's what we call four characteristics of conditioned phenomena. Then for example, the time, year, month, everything is an impermanence. Next, the page number 385. Okay, so the classification of things we are divided into two. Entity and function. Function. Look at this means all conditioned phenomena must have a function that is functioning something. If there's something happen, is there some some you know there's a lot of some if some phenomena is a functioning, is functioned by what? Cause and condition. Without cause and condition, then there's no function. For example, you know, the vehicle is running on the road because the vehicle has a lot of function. If all functions stop, then cars stop there. This means everything, you know, uh, has a function. All the functions come from causes condition. This means entity and functions. Then the function, when we talk about the function, then we need to know cause causes 
condition resolved in generally okay in generally causes cause condition result are equivalent in generally for example this glass case is cause it is condition it is cause because it produce result this glass case is a condition because it depend on causes condition this glass case is result result from result of what result of first moment of a glass case okay this mean all condition phenomena are cause condition result there's not any single condition phenomena which is cause not condition which is condition not cause there's no you know uh, condition phenomena which is cause not condition this mean cause condition results are equivalent so you, you know you can so then based on you know individually then causes condition disorder as a different meaning first we learn the definition of cause cause and condition result what is what is the definition of uh, cause can you see what is the definition of cause that which is produce right that's why this is cause because this case produce something the first moment of the case produce second moment of the case the second moment of the case produce the third moment of the case this mean all in condition phenomena continuously remain due to the produce one moment second second moment produce third third moment produce you know fourth and fifth the cause so what we call cause they say which is produce something that is specific result is called cause okay cause this mean the suffering which is we don't want a physical suffering or mental suffering the suffering always arise from cause the cause the cause suffering cause produce suffering right so if you really if you really want to minimize the physical suffering or mental suffering first we minimize the cause of suffering then the suffering cause that minimize automatically cause then it has a you know true different cause direct indirect cause direct indirect cause also in generally direct indirect cause equivalent is synonym huh direct and indirect cause is synonym equivalent direct and indirect is synonym that mean indirect is direct direct is indirect yeah father is son no so no, father. no 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 oh. no 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 uh, no no sure? no can you give me example which is direct cause not indirect cause no not in not in that sense that he, after you explain he he is the father of he is a father of his son but he is not son of his son no, that's no, no. different son is fa father is son or not no 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 you don't you you, you don't qualify it like that no no i said direct and indirect cause are synonym but kishila when say synonyms mean they are interchangeable that mean one dollar if i say one dollar and ten cent are synonym that mean you can buy a dollar things with ten cents No, no. Synonym is that uh, equivalent, right? Equivalent. May I ask the class? Do you agree that it's equivalent? It's same, like direct cause also indirect cause, indirect cause cause also direct cause. If it's direct, it cannot be indirect. Of of the same context. Ah, uh, so now please listen very carefully. 
in generally direct cause and indirect cause equivalent, no differences. Right. Right? Right? Philosophically, it's synonymous. That's what you're saying. He's saying, like, physically, it cannot be synonymous. Why not? Father and son. So it's like you're taking example of father and son. So father is son of the father. So you're saying indirect, indirect cause is equivalent. Is that right? Yeah. So, and then he's saying it's not the same, right? It's of course not the same if you put one. <laughs> if you, so that's why like generally I'm saying that it's same if you think it in a philosophical way, it's same. But if you put it in a non philosophical way, meaning you can argue that it's not equivalent. So, um, a non philosophical way, can you give me a uh, example, something is direct cause, but not indirect cause. Something in indirect cause, which is not direct cause. Can you give me an example? Uh, no. <laughs> maybe, maybe the confusion is um, perhaps what we, what, what we, I don't know. Maybe it's because some something is at, their, at any moment in time a conditioned phenomenon is both um, simultaneously a direct cause of something and also mm -hmm. indirectly causes something else because mm -hmm. everything is a chain. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a uh, confusion. Yeah, uh, even confusion, uh, you know, but suddenly, you know, in general, all conditioned phenomena are direct cause because it can produce there, you can produce the direct result. All, all in condition phenomena also indirect cause. They can produce something indirectly. Clear? You should, uh, if you if you were to rephrase it the other way, I completely agree with you. Everything it was produced by something and it produces something. So in that context, he is the indirect cause and he is the direct cause. It is in that in that context but you the terms english wise you cannot say indirect cause and indirect they are synonyms when you say that just like what i said a dollar and ten cent if they are synonyms you can buy something a dollar with ten cents that's mean, that's cent. that's mean, uh, ten cents and dollar is not synonym right the synonym the name of the dollar the name of the sin, uh, cents not equivalent right not even the uh, equivalent, not equivalent, right? including the names they are not if equivalent. i said if i said 10 cents and dollars is equivalent, then you can say, or oh, then can you buy this thing by 10 cents? No, because you uh, want uh, buy, no, something costs 10 dollars, right? Can you buy this by 10 cents? Because it's, it's, you can buy 10 dollars. That means 10 dollars and 10 cents is totally different, never be equivalent. Direct cost and indirect cost is always equivalent. That's mean always the same, a living same. If you talk about you know in a particular basis, that is contradictory. Yes? yes? What does direct cost mean? Oh that's good. So first you know the, in general we can cost we can divide into two direct cost, indirect cost. For example, first I have a motivation to hit to someone. The first the motivation is indirect cause, then I react, then I re punish to someone. The somebody got very painful. The painful is produced by directly my hand. The motivation is not direct cause, the motivation was indirect cause. The motivation produced the action, the action produced the pain. There's been three moments, you know, something uh, reminds uh, three, uh, three minutes. First minute, second minute, third minute. Three minutes. First, second, third. The middle is the direct cause of the first movement. The third one is the indirect cause of the first movement. That's why direct and indirect. Why we have to why we have to learn in you know, a direct and indirect cause? Then when you have a some when you able to change some condition. You can see 
but it's always right there. Sometimes you, when you try to change the positive condition, you cannot see that the result is right there. That means this, this, this take time. So direct and indirect. So direct cause, indirect cause, substantial cause, then correlative cause. So direct cause, indirect cause, we have to learn because, for example, ignorant is the direct cause of the karma. The consciousness is indirect cause of ignorance. Ignorance produces karma. The karma produces the consciousness. Okay. So please make sure that you must have a confusion because if I say ignorance produces karma, karma produces consciousness. The consciousness has a two types, right? I, I explained when we have a main class. One is consciousness the moment of the condition, moment of the result. For example, we have a karma, a karma become, uh, be become, you know, the ten one. Then, seconds, we, we, you know, we leave this world and we live on somewhere. The first moment of the consciousness is the indirect cause of ignorance. Then sub in you know, a substantial cause and cooperative cause is very important, very important concept. Direct, indirect, and, and substantial cause. So in order to know substantial cause, first we learn about the external level. Right? For example, the golden ring, you know, if someone, someone needs a golden ring, in order to have a golden ring, first what we need, we need a gold, we need a gold, then the, the gold transform, you know, as a golden ring. So the piece of gold is the substantial cause of the ring. The person who made the ring, if the person, the motivation, and the, uh, the what do you call? Goldsmith. Goldsmith and also the tools are the, not the substantial cause, these are the, what? Yeah, corporate cause. Corporate cause. This is external level. The second, look at, we have a consciousness. Right? We have a physical body. We have a body is going to agree. My body, our body is produced from our parents, come from our parents, the physical body. Right? Everyone will agree, the physical body. Within the physical, within the body, we have two types of body. One is the really physical body, we can see, you can touch, you know, the, this body, we call gross body. There is a, another body, we call the subtle body. The subtle body is not, you know, produced for, by parents, directly, you know, it's not really come from parents. The consciousness has a true cause. Two causes. One, substantial cause. Second is, you know, cooperative cause. So, what is the substantial cause of our consciousness? The previous consciousness. Huh? The previous consciousness. Previous consciousness. Right. The previous life. So, if we just believe. Okay. We because we believe in previous life. Then we believe. Our consciousness must be come from the previous consciousness. The previous consciousness produced this consciousness. This consciousness is the continuum of the previous life consciousness. But the physical, even the gross physical body, come from our parents. Why not the consciousness? Why not consciousness come from parents? Why not? Before that, we discussed, I mean, in the previous class, mm -hmm. 
Mm. Uh, we say that consciousness cannot be split. Mm. So if no, it no, cannot no. be split, then it cannot come. No, Sorry, no, I'm saying, I'm, I'm recalling, I'm not saying I'm right, Kishila. I'm no. saying, I say consciousness cannot be split. So your parents cannot chop half of the consciousness and give it to you, mm. which is why it, it, it doesn't come from there, it comes from the previous life. That's only what I want to say. Look at like a split also very questionable kind of topic. For example, so we have a bone and we have a flesh, right? Bone and flesh. According to the you know the Abhidharma Gosha, you know Abhidharma Gosha, oh, so the bone come from father, the flesh. The nervous systems come from parents. We believe that way. But split, you know, we're not sure the first seat from father, the first seat from mother is split or is it just a single particle, just one single particle enter in the mother womb, then one single particle come from mother's side and this, you know, stick together then the consciousness enter in it. But uh, Sonam says, also I think I remember last time when we have a class, uh, Sonam said consciousness cannot split into two. Then I, I, I think I, I, I raise a question. So we believe in reincarnation. Reincarnation, not you know, just riba. Riba and reincarnation is a different meaning. So the arhat, the first step, when he reached to the first Bhumi, first time they were able to reconnect, at the hundred, they were able to, re, uh, hundred, able to reconnect, maybe a hundred different reincarnation. They, you know, they, they reconnect hundred different reincarnation. Each condition has a consciousness. The root is one. This means the consciousness is going to split into hundred, hundred into thousand. If the consciousness cannot not split, you know, just one consciousness, then when I feel suffering, the recognition also has to feel suffering. When the recognition feels suffering, then you know the person who recognized he had he or she also has to feel suffering, but consciousness is one. So that's why in the Pramana Vadika, Chandra Kirti, one of the very important texts, he talk about the you know etymology. He talk about consciousness. Then he talk about if there is a recognition or not. There's a logic, you everybody must remember. The fresh born child. Fresh, you know, born child is not probably born from mother womb. Just first time, you know, the conceived time, a fresh child has a consciousness. This consciousness must have a previous continuum because he says because this is consciousness. That means all consciousness must have a previous continuum. Previous continuum. And ready to live, you know, ready to death, the old man has a consciousness. This consciousness, consciousness must go to next life. Because that you know, ready to die, be ready, right? Be ready or ready to die a person. This moment of the death of the person, consciousness must go to next life. Because this consciousness compound, mix with the attachment, is the logic. Contaminated by Con no, no, no. not contaminated. Uh, not contaminated, I say it's uh, with the attachment. The man is with the attachment, is the logic. Then, there's another one. Only consciousness can be substantial cause of the consciousness. Only consciousness can be 
substantial cause of consciousness, not any other things. That's mean consciousness, only Buddhist consciousness, consciousness, consciousness. But you know, substance, you know, the material, the matter cannot produce, cannot transform into consciousness. It's the logic. So it's very important, substantial cause, you know, the uh, overall cause. The definition for one, a direct cause, that which is produced directly, you know, then they are more important. Direct cause, indirect cause. Okay. Now we turn page number 387. <clears throat> indirect cause, that which is produced indirectly. You can see in the last sentence, generally, direct cause and indirect cause are equivalent. But in relation to the single basis, base, direct cause and indirect cause are contradictory. In relation to one single phenomenon, then the direct cause and indirect cause are contradictory. In general, they are equivalent. For example, the father is son, also the father is father. Father is son of the, you know, his father. He is the father of his son. That means the single father is the father. He is also the son. But the single father is not the father of the, his father. He is the son of the, his father. In relation to us, you know, individual uh, phenomena, the direct and indirect cause are contradictory. It's very easy that direct and indirect cause is quite easy, not that difficult. The substantial cause is very important. And also, we just you know go through an example of the eye consciousness, eyes consciousness. In order to Arise the eyes consciousness, three conditions are very important. First, the you know, eye sense faculty, that means the eyes ball, is important. Plus, then we need a eyes consciousness. Eyes faculty, eyes consciousness, plus we need an object. Object. Without object, we, you know, the eye consciousness cannot, you know, able to comprehend the object, cannot arise. Then second point, I will ask you, ask you, a, ask you a question. What happens when we have a deep sleep? What happens when we have a, what happened for the eye consciousness when we have a deep sleep? Not, what do you think? It's not comprehending. Is exist or not exist? Can it exist, but not comprehending. Okay, exist, not comprehending, right? Everybody would agree. Anybody going to challenge with Sunam? Okay. What I ask you. So, in order to arise the eyes consciousness, we need a three factor. One, eyes faculty. Second, the object. Third, the consciousness itself. Three factors that we can able to comprehend the object form, right? Then, when we have a deep sleep, when we become unconscious, you know, due to the accident, due to some reason, many people become unconsciousness for half hour, one hour, two hours. What happened that moment? What happened the eye consciousness, the five senses at that moment? What happened? Sonam says, all of them, you know, that exist, but not able to comprehend, not able to see the object. Everybody would agree? Yes? What? Just you see, say okay. something. So you say if it is, if it exists, you must have all three. No, no. In order to comprehend the form. Eyes consciousness comprehend what? Form. Air consciousness comprehend sound. 
So in order to comprehend the form, we must need a form. It is form, only form is not enough. We need eye consciousness. Without eye faculty, we cannot have a eye consciousness. The three factor we need. That means when we have a three factor, then we are able to comprehend the object, the form, sound, smell, taste. Then why ask you this question? You will bring the you know someone become unconscious. What happened for the five faculties? Shut down, right? It's no more function. But still exists or not? Yeah, exists, but it's in sleep. In sleep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That means uh, it's not. Uh, it may so now say comprehending. Not functioning. Yes, it's not, not functioning. functioning. But it doesn't mean they are not existing. Okay, not existing. Still exists. Still exists, but. Okay. Should... If I look like that, okay. But sometimes when you are unconscious, you still can have dreams or some vision. This is coming through the sixth mind, not the five faculties. If you are unconscious, you still can have visions. And maybe I'm not even aware of it, it just comes, right? So, the vision, I'm not sure, is coming from eyes consciousness or exactly. from the sixth mind. For example, when you close your eyes, look like you can see something, right? You can look like you can see you, you are seeing the book. Yeah. Actually, when you totally close your eyes, you cannot see the book. But for us, look like we are, I can see the book. It's, we have an image of the book in the sixth mind. But then when some people who are unconscious and when they come out of it, they I can tell they can actually tell you that mm. they have a vision. Um. They see somebody. So how do you explain that? Unconscious by the medicine or by accident? No, accident or anything. Mm. Or you know, or you hear sometimes they're in a coma or whatever. Mm. When they come out of it, sometimes they can tell you stories. Doesn't mean they 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 are unconscious not totally shut down. It's still there with a very big level. Why are why I ask this question? Because five senses we call lay dormant, right? Lay dormant. Do you know the meaning? Dormant. Dormant. This means eye consciousness became kind of potential. Potential. When you be you know awake then all five, 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 five consciousness transform as a consciousness. When we have a deep sleep, the five consciousness transform, transform, you know, change as a uh, dormant. dormant or transform as a, become as a potential, the five consciousness, potential. But, but when the five consciousness transform as a potential, but not transform as a form. Form. It's transform as a potential, not transform as a form or nature. So this means I'm I'm trying to say you say you trying I'm trying to say you all consciousness never be as a matter. It's be potential. Potential transform as a consciousness. Consciousness transform as a potential, but never transform, never be as a matter, as a particle. Okay, so direct and indirect. Here mention, for example, the Kele, uh, uh, I think, paragraph uh, 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 second. For example, the Kele, that is the person before the Kele was, and the set, set as a cause for the Kele was in indirect cause of the result. Kele was because it produced its specific result of the Kele was. That's because we have a Kele, a Kele chain as a was. Right? And you should not think, you know, when we talk about the causes condition, you should not think there's a Kele remains for many, many days, the chain is a pop. We are talking about, you know, very a very subtle level of timing. Otherwise, you know, you cannot see this case, this case produce another case. Right? Because this 
case remain, remain always look like case. We cannot see this case produce another case. If you don't go in the subtle level, if you go to the subtle level of impermanence, subtle level of the changes, then you can understand yes, the first moment of the uh, case produce second moment, second moment produce third moment, third moment four and five. We have to go very subtle level, not the coarse level. Then I hope you remember why we have a two types of permanence, gross and subtle. Why we have two two level of impermanence, 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 gross and subtle, right? What is the cause, causes and condition of the gross impermanence? What is the causes and condition of the subtle impermanence? Just guess. Impermanence has a cause and condition. Of course, it's in condition phenomena. Impermanence is condition phenomena. If something be condition phenomena, necessarily have a causes condition. Okay? So, just guess what is the causes and condition of the gross impermanence? What is the causes and condition of the subtle impermanence? Just guess. Okay, from this side and second this side. Just guess. Huh? Okay, question number one. First question, question number one. What is the causes and condition of the gross impermanence? Maybe I forget what is gross permanence. <laughs> gross impermanence. Yeah. Yeah. If I forget what is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I explain many times. Maybe, maybe I, if I were just to guess that the gross impermanence is caused by cooperative causes and uh, the, maybe the, the uh, subtle is substantial. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, very, very easy. If we leave this book on the table for 100 years, right? 100 years. Definitely you can see the book totally changed after 100 years. You can see the gross impermanence. You cannot see the subtle. Why the book is totally changed, will change after 100 years? Because the color is, is, has changed, shell has changed. Everything changed by the external, you know, other factors. Because the weather, the sun, the wind, even choke. This book by you know knife, you can see the gross impermanence. The gross impermanence always depends on other factors. Others. Okay, make sure others, for example, wind, sun, you know, chopping, you know, eating by like uh, insects, so and so. This all of this cause of the gross impermanence. The, the cause of the subtle impermanence of this book, you, you cannot see. You know, you, you have seen this one, you know, one minute before, the second moment, you can see everything is same. But in the in the reality, it never will same, it's never be always same. First moment book and second moment book. It's always there's a lot of changes. All the changes happen by what? Happen by its own causes and condition. This means the causes and condition of this book produce this book, also decay, aging, these books. This, the books and the subtle impermanence of the book, it doesn't have a different causes, okay? The book which is produced, this book, also the cause of the book, also cause of the subtle impermanence. Understand? You teach the us in 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 Bashika schools, right? Yeah, yeah. I rise teach them. Abide, a rise, a bite, and 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 uh, it sees at the yeah. same time. Do you know uh, uh, the bear, that big animal bear? Bear. Bear. When they catch uh, fish, 
a fish Pray. or no fish and then uh, prey animal yeah uh, mar mar marmok marmok right how they catch if there's a tree he catch one and put underneath oh. and try to catch one is go away finally he catch only one he catch you know he try to put and test so one get up one is run, one is run. Finally, he able to catch only one. That's why our, you know, cars, you know, we, we, we learned yesterday, today it's one. <laughs> today we learn, tomorrow we come. That's why, you know, because, you know, a busy life. So that's been, you know, I'm trying to say you, the gross impermanent <coughs> always depends on the other factors. The subtle impermanence very much depend on their own causes and conditions. This means the cause and condition of this book, produce this book, also take care of this book. We don't have a two different causes and conditions of the book and the subtle impermanence of books. And you know the substantial cause. This book has a two causes, two causes, substantial and Second one, covert cause. In the you know in general paper or the trees are the substantial cause. The people who produce these books is a, a covert cause. Same time we have a consciousness, we have a body, the consciousness you know produced from the previous consciousness, previous life consciousness. The previous life consciousness produced from the previous life and previous life. If you think this way. The father, you're going to understand, yes, my life has, doesn't have a beginning point. And my life, I, also, I don't think we, we have a ending point. Mm. Ending point. Even though when you, you know, we believe, one day we will be Buddha, one day we will be Arha. Even though when you will become Buddha, you remain forever. If you think this way, how many years, you know, we spend our time in samsara, millions of millions of billions of billions in uncountable time. That means we need to know we everybody have a connection. I know we are human being. In the daily lives, maybe we were a cow or a sheep or fish or so that means we everybody have a you know, connection. If you think this way, therefore it's very easy to cultivate compassion towards others. It is very easy to cultivate compassion towards your enemy. Your enemy is just become enemy in this life. In the previous life, you know, that enemy may be your best friend, maybe your friends, your parents. One, you can you find it very easy to cultivate compassion and love. So if you think this way, for you very easy to cultivate different session. Look like you feel so look feel tired. You know? We spend billions of billions of time in samsara. We always go through a lot of suffering. We will go again in you know, many 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 years through suffering. Then what do you think? I must get out from samsara. In order to get out of samsara, I must cut the root of the samsara. Because the root of the samsara and samsara has a connection, the link, cause and effect. Right? Cause and effect. So that's why we have to learn substantial cause and correct cause. Okay, so before we move to the next uh, subject, I will ask you a very simple question. Do you really believe? The fire produces smoke or you don't believe? Do you really believe the smoke, the fire produces smoke? The smoke is result of fire. Do you believe or not? Yes, yes, yes. Sure, so now? Non-provision, not provision. 
Because what smoke are you talking? What what kind of smokes? Any kind of smoke must produce on fire. No. Can you give me an example? There's no smoke. It's steam. Anyway, why why ask why I ask you this question? When you say when you really think the fire produces smoke. This means the smoke is resolved, the fire is caused. But the smoke and fire never coexist. Okay, Sheila, that is very easy. First moment of fire produce second moment of smoke. And the second moment of fire produce the third moment of smoke. So smoke. you see smoke and fire together, so but they are not together. Please answer my question. <laughs> Does smoke produce uh, fire produce smoke or not? This is the question. Yes, yes. You know, smoke produced by fire. Without fire, we cannot have smoke. But the smoke and fire are causes and cause and effect. The result of smoking smoke is fire. It is a result. The fire is cause. The cause and effect never coexist. Right? If they, the result and cause coexist, then we cannot say it produces that, that produces this. We cannot say, right? If they are together, they don't need to produce each other. This means first fire, second moment, there's a, a smoking, smoke, and the smoke and fire never coexist. Right? Coexist or not? Not able to coexist or not? Not able to coexist, right? It's always come first and second. If they are able to meet or not? Do they are able to meet or not? Fire and smoke. Yes. They are able to meet. Yes. They, how they can meet without coexist? Uh, Look, when someone is here, someone they are like, hi. No, no, like this, right? First, I ask a question, a fire produces smoke or not? Everybody say yes, the fire produces smoke. The smoke is very much different than the fire. Second question, do they able to meet each other or not? Do they able to co coexist or not? Cannot, because cause and effect. If, don't, if they're not able to coexist each other, how they can meet each other? meet, come together. They cannot come together. If they if they're not able to come together, how they can produce? Chapters. When you go through the few chapters, it's mentioned how to produce 
the, how the cost produce the result, return will exist. So it's really going very sudden level of you know move, uh, movement, movement or sudden level of transformation. Transformation, very sudden level. That's you know my hand cannot touch and this hand how this hand can produce suffering on this hand they must coexist then there's a pain and you know, suffering cannot coexist how they can produce suffering if, uh, if like that uh, there's only one explanation to go oh. mm -hmm. the production is merely Decimated, imputed. We we see it as a time frames, and you, hence it is a production. But there is no essence of the productions, true productions of it, because of the they cannot coexist. But we still see that it it produces it and they coexist. So that's only it resolved. Go back into one only possible explanation. There is no true production. It's only a mere imputation. And that's mean no. That's mean you are saying. The cause and effect is merely designation, not really happen in the practical level. No, no, the result is mere. Okay, anyway, you know, everybody think about first. You remember, cause, you know, cause have a true, direct, and indirect. Then we talk about substantial. Then we talk about the or cause. Is first you try to understand, try to get knowledge with the external levels. A second, you just bring the idea in the internal level. I have a body, the body substantial cause, this is this, this. We have a mind, the mind's substantial cause are this is this. Then you need to try to understand how the cause produces the result without coexist each other. Okay? If you go through this idea, and you really going to understand the subtle impermanence and subtle transformation. If there's a subtle transformation, then there's a there must be a cause transformation. If there is a subtle impermanence, then there must be the cause impermanence. Gross impermanence based on the subtle impermanence. Gross transformations also based on the subtle transformation transformation then also think about you know the transformation cause and effect in order to have a 10 in order to have a 10 percent happiness we need 10 percent of causes and condition of the happiness 10 percent even though you have a 10 per 9 percent of you know cause and condition of happiness but you cannot have a 10%, you have only 9%. In order to have a 50% happiness, you need what? 50% cause and condition of happiness. In order to have a 100% happiness, then you must need a 100% of cause and condition of happiness. You have a look at what we do. We have a very strong desire to be 100% happy. But we have a only 10 or 2 or 3 percent of causes and conditions of happiness. That's why we are not able to be happy all the time. So we really need to know the law of causality. Okay? So the conclusion after you study the causes condition that you must know in order to reach to the 10 percent happiness, I need a 10 percent happiness cause of condition. 50% I need a 50% cause condition. Same, if you want to reduce 100% suffering, you must reduce 100% cause condition of suffering. 50%, 50%, 10%, 10%, 1%, 1 1%. why we have a very strong desire to be happy, but we have a very little happiness. Because we don't have all the condition. Okay, so we just took here. Sorry. So mm -hmm. in that in that way, um, happiness is also impermanence because it is. So if it is impermanence, then why pursue happiness? True happiness, true happiness. 
if it is impermanent, then why go for happiness? Even you obtain the happiness, you are still impermanent. You cannot. Oh. Food is impermanent or permanent? Huh? Food. Fruit and food. Food. Uh -huh. Permanence or impermanence? Impermanence. Of course, impermanence, right? You mean that when you eat the food, you can even feel your stomach. It reduces your hungry. Right? Even the impermanence. So happiness is impermanent, but it gives you good satisfaction. Mm. Look at fire is a uh, you know impermanence, it gives you heat. Right? So if happiness is permanent, then whatever we have, we have happiness, they're always there. We cannot uh, you know we cannot increase our happiness. So happiness is impermanent, that's why it's going to reduce, it's going to increase, it's going to you know, disappear, it's going to become. So yes, happiness is impermanence, because one reason why happiness is impermanence, because happiness is dependent on cause and condition. Happiness is the condition phenomena. If something is conditioned phenomena, it's subject to be changed. Is subject then, then suffering also impermanence is dependent on cause condition, then suffering is also subject to be changed. That's why we really have a hope to be in hundred percent happy. We really have a hope to be Buddha because we believe you know all the suffering are dependent on cause condition. If we have a, if we change, if we transform the cause condition, then you know one day we will be Buddha. Is it? Sorry, can I mm -hmm. further ask some questions? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, in, that, in that case, uh, the difference between suffering and happiness, mm -hmm. they, they have one very distinctive uh, difference. Suffering, you don't have to put effort and is, you're going to have suffering. Yeah, it's like somehow you arise or whatever. But happiness, you have to put in like a lot of effort just to get the 10%. You see, suffering, you don't have to feel it, you have to free it or cultivate it, you know, it, 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 it survives by itself and it feeds itself, you know, complete. But happiness is like, you, you put in and it's gone, it's gone. So you need to constantly put effort to maintain, like 10%, mm -hmm. you really constantly have to do it. Yeah. But, uh, eating food, Kankishira, hungry, you don't have to do anything, you will get hungry. But in order to get full, you have to eat. But hungry, you don't have to. Why the difference of this? Uh, this looks... It looks, you know, looks very simple. Salam said, we don't need to put effort. We don't need to collect the causes condition of sufferings. We are always be in suffering. We always be suffered. We are in suffering, right? Why well, Singapore weather is always hot? Why Himalayan weather some call it hot? Why? Why? It doesn't need any cause condition, right? Because Singapore weather is always hot. Because all the conditions always there. But always hot. In the Himalayan region, some weather is very hot, some very cold. And there's are very hot conditions there. Look at we think in order to have a happiness, we need to put a lot of effort. Effort, right? But yes, we need to put an effort for suffering too. Talking about suffering, what physical suffering or mental suffering? Hungry. Uh, hungry, of course. We, we need to put a lot of effort. If you eat a lot of big breakfast, if you just stay there a few hours, you're not going to be hungry. You walk, you talk, you act, act, right? It's be hungry because all the food is going to in the stomach. That means this means everything in the mass. And also when Paul so Solomon raised the question, look at it. We talk about happiness. We have a happy physical happiness, mental happiness. We consider you know, we have a happiness. Actually, the, we, the, the happiness which we experience, actually, these are the suffering. Suffering. Because when the suffering is there, it's really, what we call, when it's suffering becomes 100%. 100%, we feel it's so suffering, I'm not happy. When the suffering reduces 50%, we feel so happy, feel happy. When the suffering reduces, the zero level, then we feel I'm very happy. Actually, we are experiencing experience the zero degree of suffering. 
10 days of suffering, we feel suffering. We must, but we think this is happiness. Actually, this is suffering. Suffering of what? Suffering of change. change. Suffering of suffering. Suffering of change. And uh, pervasive suffering. Suffering of change. Suffering of suffering. Now, dukkha is pervasive suffering. Pervasive means all sentient beings have this dukkha. This pervasive is cover for all sentient beings. The changing of suffering means, you know, when the suffering we minimize, we, we recognize this is a happiness, but actually this is suffering. Okay? Okay, we could stop here. Then tomorrow we have a meditation class. Yeah. Do they have a question, Kishila? Any question? Okay. Five so, minutes. Yeah, five minutes. What do you call? Yes.